Hi everyone. First of all, thank you very much for all of your fantastic questions. We've got a team here who are looking forward to answering them. We have got Anton Beachy, Hi everyone. who is the on-site project manager. We've got Dr. Peter Worry, who is a renowned Roman tile specialist. Nice that intro. <laughs> and we've got our PhD student studying for his doctorate, Joe Locke as well. Hello. So the first question from the public was all about the wood. Are you finding any remains of the wood used as fuel? And then also, if so, what trees were used? Why was the wood coming from and did they manage the woodland? Okay, so we're not actually finding any large lumps of preserved wood. However, we are finding deposits with charcoal and lumps of charcoal within that. So we will take that back uh, to the lab and have it analysed and they'll be able to tell us. Okay. Um, and the wood for the, for the actual kiln, to fire the kiln, uh, was actually from the local area. This was a massive part of Braden Forest itself, so the, all the raw materials were here. And I forgot the other questions were there. Oh yeah, um, do we know, so we know where the wood was coming from, were they managing the woodland? Uh, we're not entirely sure really about this site, but, um, about the area here. But the Romans were, we know they managed woodland? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, you're finding a variety of types of tile. Can you tell us what they are called, please, and for what purposes they would have been used? Right, shall I pick that one up? Uh, well, I'll do the first one and let you do the, the, the flue tile. Okay. So, we're, get, we're getting lots of roof tile. So, this is big. the standard tegula. Uh, so, a, a big thing weighs, weighs, this one weighs about seven kilograms. Uh, think about manoeuvring that on the roof. Uh, um, and uh, um, it has flanges down the sides. And if you put that back down, uh, there'll be another, on the roof, there'll be columns of these uh, uh, tegulae going up and up the roof. And to bridge the gap between columns of tegulae, we'd have uh, an imbrex, which is about the, this long, in fact, the same length as the tile, uh, as the tegula. And that goes over the gap like that. Uh, so, so as to make the uh, tile watertight. And as I'm here, I'll just show you how these tiles overlapped. So this is the top of a, a, a tegula, and this is the bottom of a tegula. The top is cut away on the flange here, and the bottom of the tegula is cut away underneath it. And the two tiles overlap like that. So it's a double overlap and the, the cutaways sort of mate and this allows the tiles to actually rest on the roof they don't really need nails but they do have some nails uh, um, just to give an extra bit of security the shape of this cutaway changes through time and that's a way that we can date the tiles so that's that's the roofs we are finding lots and lots of different bricks uh, um, this is a sort of basic sort of brick which is actually a very small uh, a brick that would would have been used for uh, um, making the uh, stacks of pilar, which are the uh, um, stacks which the uh, hypercoarse floor rests upon. So you have a stack a stack of about twelve of these in the column, and then you have a slightly bigger one on top of that, which is called a pedalis, and we find lots of those. And then to bridge the gap between the two stacks of pilar. We have a two foot square, two Roman foot square tile, which is about six and a half centimetres thick, which bridges all over them. And that is, forms the floor of your uh, hypercost. Wow. Uh, and there's a huge variety of bricks. Some of them we understand, some of them we don't. And then, uh, um, before Joe gets onto his exotic, nicely combed products, uh, <laughs> um, we, uh, we will show a very rare thing here, which we have found several, which is an armchair voussoir. And this is used to form uh, um, arches uh, or ribs to hold up the, the bathhouse roof. And this is a particular sort of style where you have solid uh, uh, um, ribs formed by that, and then hollow ones which bridge the gaps over here. So they've got these rest, they rest plates of tile rests on there and on there form a hollow one and then there's another uh, um, armchair voussoir out here uh, um, so the thing repeats. We know of no place in the local area that might have used these. These are a very odd and exciting find for, for, for a site like this. Oh wow okay thank you. And Jeff. 
Okay, um, so in terms of the flue tile products uh, at the kiln site, there we know there are at least three different types uh, being produced. So we have box flue tiles. This is a bit an example of a fragment of one. Uh, hollow voussoir as well. This is another fragment. Everyone loves to say voussoir, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> what do you use that for, Joe? Um, so this is um, this is for creating cavities in a in a vault um, within a bathhouse. So the box flue here is responsible for creating a cavity in the walls, so it would be vertically stacked within the walls. Um, and then when it reaches the top of the wall, it would connect to the hollow voussoir, which would which would conduct the heat and the cavity will continue uh, into the vault. Um, and we also have a, half, a fragment of a half box, quite a large piece actually, of a half box flue tile here. And as the name suggests, it's literally just uh, like half, half of a box um, because you have the flanges here, which only continue um, a short distance and, and creates an empty space here. And the way that this would work is it would adhere to the wall like this um, and create a cavity in that way and then plaster would be applied uh, here. Is that what the combing is for? Yes, yes. So uh, the combing would be used to help this to key um, either to the mortar uh, in a box rutal or a hollow voussoir to the, to the wall mm -hmm. and also um, if I pick up the box flute tile, uh, this also has combing on it. This would, um, the plaster would ad uh, had adhere to this as well. Um, yes, and you get these combing patterns in quite a range of different uh, decorative styles, which is very interesting. And, uh, and we've had quite a few varieties here at this site. We've got we've got a variety of different combs. Yeah, but we've got so many combs. It's a, it's, it's a bit disturbing. <laughs> it is actually yes. There's not many uh, multiple examples of single type. So uh, so that that comb on that, that on on that one seems to have about four four teeth. We've got one with about fifteen teeth. We have an oh. example with a, a large number. Yeah. Which we should have brought along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you know about the labourers that would have worked at Brandiers? What evidence have they left behind? Well, they've left. Um, two very obvious bits of evidence. Uh, one is, if I go back to the tegula, when they finish a tile, they sign it uh, 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 with a signature, which they make with a hand. So they, they go like that, and this has got three, three, a three-digit signature, uh, um, and that is made by the actual guy who made the tile. And we, he also makes a groove down here when he's smoothing the tile. So we have his fing fingerprints in there as well. Uh, um, so that's one very obvious thing. And incidentally, all of the signatures, or virtually all the signatures we see in this kiln are three fingers. Um, normally, well, not normally, but uh, uh, the most common is one semicircle or two semicircles. Three or four semicircles are relatively unusual. So these stand out, and it suggests that it may be one individual who's doing this, ma making these tiles. The other evidence that they've left us, kindly, is the odd bit of graffiti. And here is a letter M. Uh, uh, um, but, and, and it may well have had something here and something here, we don't know. Uh, a, a lot of these graffiti we, we do find on, on uh, tiles are literate. Uh, um, so uh, uh, certainly some of the workforce is well educated. When you say literate, do you mean... No, they, they could write. Just discernible words that are yes, usually they, Yes, they, well they could do the alphabet and, and, and we... And w w one of the wonderful bits of graffiti we get, which we might come back to later, is lists of people who've been working in the, in the workshop. So, you know, there's a, a tile, not in this country, where we have the list of the four people who are working in the workshop making tiles. That's awesome. Does that suggest that they're starting to be slaves then, Peter, and they're actual craftsmen? I don't know. It, 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 we, we really don't know the answer to that question. It's, uh, uh, um, uh, um, you know, and there's a huge variety of people who do this. Uh, um, we have perhaps maybe slightly more 
graffiti on. No, actually, I think this is wrong. I was going to say we have more graffiti on uh, uh, military tiles, but I don't think we do. But perhaps it's it's slightly more sophisticated the stuff that we do find on military tiles. Uh, can we share any maps which illustrate the distribution of the tile stamps which we found throughout the country? Right, shall I pick that one up? You can, but you can say there's some very good diagrams on your book, Peter. Well, <laughs> yes, I, book. yes, I have. Well, Have you read a book, Peter? Well, well, actually, for this particular question, it's, it's an article I wrote for Britannia, 2017. Look it up. <laughs> we'll put a link. <laughs> yes, put, put a link. That'd okay. Good. Um, uh, uh, out of this kiln, we're getting two sorts of stamp tiles. Uh, um, ones that... We'd start off re with the letters uh, um, T, P, F, and some of them just say T, P, F, and some of them say T, P, F, A, and some say T, P, F, B, and some say T, P, F, C, and this one says T, P, F, P. Uh, um, uh, now the distribution of the one, the T, P, F ones, is uh, two thirds of them have been found in Sirencester. And virtually all of the rest have been found in uh, a sort of upmarket villas to the west of, of, of um, Sirencester. So a very narrow distribution, uh, um, particularly given how many of these stamps have been found. Uh, um, it's roughly speaking, more than half of the stamps made by non-military kilns uh, um, are found in Gloucestershire and North Wiltshire. And, uh, and most of those are found in Sirencester and uh, to the west of Sirencester and say TPF plus possibly further initials. Is that strongly suggesting, Peter, that this is a civic tile kiln for Sirencester itself? Well, that's certainly something that I've postulated. Uh, um, if we draw a parallel with Gloucester, which is, which is unique in the Roman world, having uh, tiles that are stamped RPG and then the name of the town councillors responsible. So RPG stands for Reis Publicae Clarentium, so uh, uh, um, uh, made in the council's uh, 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 till, kiln, or public, public property of, uh, of Gloucester, and followed by the names of the councillors. And they are equally uh, uh, made in the same way as these. So they are in cues, which means the letters are cut into the tile rather than a relief where they stand out. Mm -hmm. And there are other parallels in uh, the very tight distribution of the Gloucester tiles and the fact that none of the Gloucester tiles get to, to uh, uh, Sirencester and vice versa. Uh, so I think these TPF ones could well stay, the TPF part of it could, could refer to the, to the municipal kiln uh, run by the Sirencester Town Council. So it could, for instance, say uh, uh, um, a Tegularia Publicae Fecurant, so made in the public kiln. Yeah. It do doesn't say Sirencester, sadly, like they do in Gloucester, but it's still uh, uh, quite good. Which Andrew Armstrong is obviously very pleased about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he is, but he should he should come out and he, he hasn't he hasn't got an A B C and P, which I believe may refer to the contractors who the council employed to run the kiln. There's a gauntlet there. <laughs> um, and the, we've got something like four, nearly forty, haven't we, stamp tiles now here? Yes. Is that quite a lot from one site? It's it's uh, um, from a kiln. It may not be excessive, but is it? But relative to the number of tiles, uh, 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 number of stamp tiles, it's a huge proportion. And perhaps the most important part of this is that each of these dies, uh, sorry, each of these stamps types are known in a number of dies. And we have got uh, now more than half the dies that, that have been, uh, um, uh, that are known to have been produced. So more than half the TPF type dies and certainly more than half of the LHS type dies. I'll just come on to those in a tick. Yeah. Uh, which means it's unlikely that there is any other kiln that's manufacturing these products. So this is the source of all of the tiles in, in, in Gloucester. That's, you know, that's what we'd like to believe. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> next, year, next season, they've written, uh, we all hope to confirm that, but that's um, good. Uh, just saying, the other type of die we get here, and I'm afraid the L has fallen off here, uh, um, reads LHS. We do not know what LHS stands for. Uh, typically, these are interpreted as the tria nomina, or the complete name, the initials of the complete name of the 
a tilery owner or possibly the tilery maker, tile maker. Uh, um, but these have a dis distribution to the ones with TPF. So these ones are, are virtually only found along what was Ermine Street. So that, that is a Roman road that runs from Silchester south of Reading through Sirencester and up to Kenchester, which is south of Hereford. So, and these are found at both extremes of that distribution and along it. It's a very odd distribution. Uh, um, and uh, I call these export dyes. I don't know where they are, but we need some explanation for them. Okay, brilliant. Okay, back to people. How many people would have been involved in the manufacturing process at the site? And are we able to infer the ages of people who made the tiles from the markings on them? Right, well, um, I've calculated... Uh, I told, mentioned earlier the, the, this tile with four people's names on it. Uh, um, and it says sort of um, uh, uh, um, uh, secundus. Uh, 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 um, and after it, it says CCXX, so 220. And the next name says name 220. And the next name says 220. And the next name says 220. So we might infer that that is suggesting that that, that was how many tiles they produced that day. We see this 220 uh, occurring on all sorts of stamps throughout the Roman world. Uh, um, and it seems pretty clear that uh, the, the, the uh, quota expected of anybody working in, in, in making tiles is 220. Uh, um, if we go from that and say, well, how long w uh, um, would it take to, to um, load up a kiln and, uh, 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 um, and then fire it and let it cool down? You have a, possibly a, a two-weekly cycle, so making tiles for a week and, and loading them in, firing the kiln and then letting it cool down. And so, uh, um, seven so to that would be a week to fire and a week to, to cool yeah, down. Yeah, the yeah, yes, fire. effectively, yes. So, uh, uh, um, and so you have. I, thank you. You should have. I should have said. When you make the, the the tiles, they probably take two weeks to to to, to dry before they are fit okay. to go in in the kiln. Oh, okay. So you have a, a process, a two a, so, so a four, two stage a four process. Week process. Well, it's a two, but but except it's overlapping. Yes. So so for for two weeks you're making tiles, and then the following two weeks they're 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 firing up and firing down. Yeah. Uh, um, and then you know at the same time as they're firing up and firing down, you're making another two hundred and twenty to load up the kiln. So you're, you're firing the kiln probably every fortnight, and that that kiln load on the 220 will be one and a half thousand tiles. Wow. Uh, um, this is a bigger kiln than, than uh, so possibly 2,000. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so yeah. We, so so it may may be bigger. Uh, um, so why am I? Why, what was the question? Well, you were going to say how many people would have been involved in the manufacturing right, right, process. Thank you. Yes, right, yes, right. So, so, so uh, 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 um, that was a long-winded way of saying <laughs> that you only require one guy to make the tiles, uh, uh, um, but you require uh, uh, more labour to, to, to uh, um, prepare the clay, to move it in, to, to, to bring the wood in, to, to, to yeah. um, stoke up the fire and all the rest of it. Uh, using uh, um, sort of old, uh, sort of uh, medieval and indeed slightly more modern uh, comparisons with, 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 with kilns, uh, um, you probably only needed five people to run a kiln of, of this sort of size, uh, which is quite surprising. And if they were working uh, um, 12, months, 12 months of the year, they would spend about four months running the kiln because you can only make uh, tiles in, in the dry weather. Uh, 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 which essentially means sort of May, June, July, August. Mm. The earliest inscription we've got in this country is from, I think, Vinterlander, uh, sending some guys to the kilns in April, and then there's a, uh, a piece of graffiti on a tile from Silchester, which is dated uh, mid-September. So that gives us a sort of range of, of when these tiles were being fired. There's nothing outside of those things. Okay. So four months running the kilns, eight months, Gathering the wood, yeah. uh, and you want to gather the wood when, the, where, when, when there aren't leaves on it, so it's much best, better done in the winter. Uh, and you need a huge, huge pile of wood to do this. And, uh, and preparing the clay, puddling the clay, getting it into reasonable condition, so you want enough clay to, to run the kiln through the, through the year. And I guess you have to weather the clay as well for yes, exactly. over the winter. Yes, there's a whole process of, 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 of that. And we're not 100% sure of how they did it. Uh, um, but because um, you know, we can only sort of make parallels with, with, with uh, um, uh, 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 um, 
uh, artisan practices today to sort of uh, make equivalent decisions. So uh, um, our, our answer is half a dozen people or so, but not, Although, not, 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 not an army. That's only if there's one kiln on this side. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> only, if only if there's uh, 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 one kiln operating at one time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> there may be more than one kiln, but they may be been operating sequentially. <laughs> Half a dozen people per kiln is what I'm saying. <laughs> right, okay. And can we infer the ages of the people who made the tiles from the markings on them? So initially I said no, but yeah. Peter believes that he may be able to. Yes. So, so uh, uh, um, there's two reasons uh, for, for uh, modifying this. One is uh, uh, um, you often see, uh, often, uh, uh, um, you occasionally see on tiles uh, 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 um, when they when they're making this tile they. they, they they run their hands down the side like that to smooth it, and uh, you want to make you, you need need a smooth surface so the frost doesn't get in. Uh, um, sometimes this particular process, you see that the, 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 instead of getting a smooth surface down here, it that the the uh, the finger or the or the thumb has gone right underneath the the, the tile, and I, and I and and this is very distinctive, and you can see. There are some sites, in fact, Joe and I have just reported on a site called Chet Road, where we had what I call the arthritic uh, tile maker, because he had a hand, and all, all of his product is sort of undercut. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, he had arthritis in his hand, okay. so I, I decided he must be, uh, you know, uh, um, he wasn't young. Yes. Uh, uh, um. And then the second reason is, these tiles are very heavy. And particularly when making the bricks, mm. so um, uh, 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 um, it's uh, it, it's you, know, you can't do this forever. It's quite hand intensive, isn't it, as a job? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Good, yeah. You can understand yeah. how that would lead to arthritis. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question: How oh, have any other kilns been found in the area? If so, how many are known? Do you want to answer so, this one, Joe? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so there is one <laughs> kiln in the area which has been found and which was excavated in the late 70s. It's about um, two kilometres to the west, northwest, in Oaksey. And, um, that, and they found at least one kiln, potentially two, although some debate about whether the second kiln is a drying shed or a kiln. Um, I think it's probably just a, a second kiln, so there's two kilns there. Um, also on that site there was quite a few uh, mounds which could either be wasted dumps or it could it, they could be concealing uh, extra kilns. So that's about 10 additional kilns, so it could be an extremely large size. And that is, uh, as I said, just about two kilometres away, so it's very close. Um, that site though, I think the pottery could, be, could date it to the early first century, um, the mid early first century. So, yeah. Neronian times. Aren't yeah, Nero yeah, the Neronian so, period. So, so and our, our pottery yeah. is actually looking. We have, don't have much of it, but it's looking mid second century all the way through to the fourth century. We have no first century. No first century at all. Which is what we were hoping for. Which is what I was hoping for. Because <laughs> I, I say the, 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 the stamp tiles are second century. So I was very pleased about that. <laughs> Uh, is this kiln of a typical type and can you tell us anything about others that have been found? Well, you kind of answered the others that have been found, so is this, uh, is this kiln of a typical type? Um, yes, I think it is broadly typical. As Peter said, it is uh, on the larger side, but um, it's roughly square or rectangular in shape. It has a, cent a single central flue which uh, protrudes slightly from the, the main chamber, the, uh, as you can see. Um, it's blocked, we think that it is blocked at the end, we have a small amount of that um, uncovered but uh, the jury's out slightly on that because we only have a small amount of it um, revealed. Um, and yeah, so the typical internal dimensions of a kiln is about three to four meters and ours is slightly larger than that. It's also typical in showing signs of, of different phasing in the kiln as well. Uh, kilns that have been dug uh, recently have shown that there's been multiple repairs and adjustments to the, the uh, structure of the kiln and we see that here as well we see the central flue being um, modified and um, reduced in width and there's also potentially some evidence of uh, earlier kiln phases beneath the wall as well we should hopefully see that next season yeah hopefully yeah
Is it worth just pointing out some of the, the uh, tile uh, of kiln furniture we found? Uh, this, we believe, is the floor of the, the, the um, firing chamber. So, so where um, uh, uh, the heat will be coming up through these little holes here, and the tiles will be stacked on top. Uh, so uh, um, that's that's quite a nice find. And my favourite find, apart from all the stamps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the relief pattern tile, which we haven't spoken about, but uh, of more, no doubt, some future point, is this, which I believe th 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 this is a um, clearly been deliberately formed. But this hole is uh, bigger here and bigger here. It's, it's clearly been formed by somebody doing that. It's not a stick that's done that. Uh, and I think this was a, the inspection, your eye hole, to look into the. Uh, uh, um, kiln when it's firing to see what the, the colour is, to judge whether the right temperature has been reached and therefore to decide how, you know, what they should do, should we get more oxygen in or can they, uh, are they, uh, can they finish the burn, that sort of thing. So I think I, that's really quite nice. Object. I would say Peter, yeah. the temperature in the kiln gets up to what, 1400 degrees? Uh, do you know? I don't know. Well I'm not going to put my eye in and have a look inside there. Perhaps you, might, perhaps you might do that. that distance. You might maybe, do that maybe that, that distance. distance. I think you might do that. Maybe you did it at night when it was easier. <laughs> See the colour. Yes, I don't. Know. But but they did. I know. I know. Yeah. It's, it's standard. Yeah, you look from a distance, don't you? Yeah. You have a cold inside. It bends. Um, are you able to roughly estimate how many tiles would be fired in one go within the kiln? Well, I, I can steal this from you. You can now, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have all the time. I think, mean, depending on what type of tile was fired in there, roughly about 1,500 to 2,000 in each each burn, I think. You must have been reading a very good book. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, we do have some experts on the site, apparently. <laughs> Let us know if you find them, we can put them in a video. <laughs> um, did we cover how long the firing process would last? We, we did, didn't we? Did. Yeah. Um, how much fuel would a typical firing need? Back to wood. Oh. I'm not, I don't know, no. a lot, but a lot. <laughs> I suppose that's why you'd need to manage woodland or at yes. least have access to it. You need to have a huge amount of wood. Would they sort of use up the resources and the clay and the wood and then move on somewhere else, do we know? Well, uh, this has been suggested. I don't actually think we have evidence for it, but, but there are places where, where they've used ceramic tile and then they switch to stone. And so it's been suggested that they uh, no longer had uh, uh, um, enough timber to fire the, 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 the kilns and therefore they went to another product. I don't think that stands up to, to too much analysis uh, um, uh, because certainly in Gloucest Gloucestershire starts switching to, to starts the process of switching to, to uh, stone in about 200 AD and then the rest of the country follows this trend mm -hmm. over the next century. Now uh, um, I can't see how you know, everybody uh, should run out of uh, wood at the sort of same sort of period. And you can see the geographical sh spread of this. It comes from Gloucester and it slowly ebbs out uh, uh, chronologically from Gloucester across the country. So I think it's, it, I think it's a stylistic thing uh, that they, uh, um, but it's still possible you may, may run out of wood, but that'd be a more local issue rather than a generic issue. Thank you. What do we know about the decommissioning of the site and has any evidence been found of late tile reuse elsewhere on the farm or in the village? So actually we, the other day we went to the local church because uh, sometimes the tiles were reused in, in churches. Um, but unfortunately the church here is 15th century and previously there was a Saxon, Saxon church on that site. So it's possible the Saxon church may have had reused some of the tile. We don't have any, have any evidence of that. But recycling of tile in Roman times and later is absolutely par for the course. Uh, um, so uh, um, I believe we probably had several recycling centres. I've argued for some uh, um, in, in, in the Gloucestershire area. Uh, um, in in um, uh, Pompeii, uh, there was a sign uh, on one of the shops that said second-hand tiles for sale here. No uh, way! Uh, 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 um, which rather sort of supports it. <laughs> <laughs> so almost certainly, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and, and you see a lot of recycled tile uh, uh, um, all across uh, uh, Roman sites. So tiles have been brought in from somewhere else uh, for use in, uh, for other purposes, from drains, to, 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 to uh, yes, or into, recycled into open signalium, which is breaking it up 
uh, uh, to make a waterproof mortar, uh, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, also, also we do have evidence on the uh, in this trench of rubber cuts being dug, so they can actually recover some of the tile that was used to build the kiln. Um, we're not sure what date those are, but um, someone is definitely keen to to get that tile and uh, use it in another construction. Um, and in some of in, in the wall in one of the slots that we we've, we've dug, you can almost imagine uh, the way that it's broken as someone is, is chipping away uh, to find the, the tiles that they want, um, which is kind of cool. And, uh, but that's uh, something else for next year that we can investigate the rubber cuts and how much is actually surviving on the northern side of the kiln. And we certainly know that after the sort of Roman period, as we say, they did take all of the. Buildings oh yeah, absolutely. The medieval yeah. period. Yeah, they're, they're using a lot of reclaimed Roman tile. Yeah. And the final question is that they've read that the Lavery family are planning on creating a kiln for modern day use. Will it be of a similar type to the one that has been dug over the last two weeks? And do they have a feel for when it might be completed? Well, we sort of believe they are going to do that, but we're not sure when. But I guess if you follow them on Instagram, the Brandius Project, they'll keep you updated on that. Yeah, almost certainly. Link in the show notes. <laughs> in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great lecture that we've had. Well, thank you very much, all three of you, and to everyone behind you for all the pictures and the Hopefully content. Hopefully everyone's still awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you've reached the end, well done. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, back next season. Bye, everyone. Right. Bye.